Right, it's time to turn our heart and eyes upon God's word. I share with the, our three sisters who are good girls sitting at the front. <laughs> this morning somebody said, we, we Baptists never sit at the front, but they are good girls, they are sitting here. Mike and uh, you know, so you all in the sitting at the front, good, good, good. And I just share with them to comfort them in a way <laughs> or encourage them. You know, in, 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 in Korean church, you know, we, we joke. You know, we got some Christian joke, isn't it? We, we joke that, you know, the, 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 how much of the saliva of a you know, you know, preacher hit you will show how much you're blessed. <laughs> but we should never joke since, joke something like that since, you know, this COVID in this has come, isn't it? So, and the Lord will bless you who are sitting in front. I know it's all over you. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm joking. Now, before we hear this uh, well-known story, an appropriate story from the Bible, Jesus, in this, in the camp, you know, you know he, he made his triumphal entry to Jerusalem as a king. What does it mean to me? Mm -hmm. Sometime, like during Easter and during in this Christmas time, we hear all this story. Oh, that's a wonderful story. That's a wonderful sermon. But sometime... We just take it as a what happened in the past, 2,000 years ago. It's so important we Christian, whenever we read the Bible, whenever we study Bibles in the Bible study or individual studies, whenever we hear some, we have to always make sure how can I apply that into my Christian life. Amen? How that story is related to me at these present times. What is our Lord is speaking to me through this story, through this sermon today? Amen? So let's all open our hearts and eyes. In a way, it would be good if when you hear this, uh, in this, in this story from the Bible, make imagination what it would be like. I did this morning you know, while I was praying for you know, our in this, in this service and the message I'm going to share with you. I did pray and ask the Lord to put me in that story. If I were one of the crowd, if I were one of the disciples in this story, wow, what it would be like. Wow, what it would be like. Let's open our hearts and let's be one of the disciples or one of the, you know, the you know, person in the crowd in this wonderful story. I'm reading from... Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 1 to 11. Please don't think I know that story, then you will stop to know more about this story. You will stop yourself to hear God's voice. Let's all humbly open our heart to hear the voice of the Lord through this story this morning. Matthew, chapter 21, verse 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and then at once you will find a donkey tied there with a, her colt by her. Untie them and bring them, bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that, the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a, a, and a, and a colt, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds 
that went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, when we look at the four gospel books which talk about in this, you know, life and in the ministry of Jesus in the Bible, we see this story. Jesus made a triumphal entry to Jerusalem. We can see in all four gospel books. I believe there's a reason, because it's a very important story. And in a way, this story shows very important the turning point of the ministry of Jesus in the world. Do you remember how many times Jesus asked people not to talk to other people what sort of amazing miracles he performed? Or even he said, don't, after he you know, you know, revealed who he is truly, ask other people not to talk to other people. Have I thought why? It would be good you know, if more and more people heard you know, what sort of amazing miracle Jesus performed within the healings you know, you know, of the, you know, all these sick peoples. But why? Jesus asked people not to share about him and what sort of amazing miracle he performed. The reason why is he want to prevent in the, in the people to know and believe in him in wrong way. We see the evidence of that already. Well, in the verse 11, the crowd in the, in the answer, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. They just, after they heard all those of what Jesus did, people believe Jesus was a, one of the prophets they have had in, in, this, in Israel. And another important thing we must in this, in the recognize and then know is, in here, in the past, I, I preached on this in, this in, in on one of the, in the Palm Sunday in the past, I, I, I can't remember how many years ago is that. In here, there is a big contrast between what Jesus was uh, really want to do through that triumphal entry and what people in the crowd really expect was completely different. People praise and in, 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 in Jesus, you know, as their king, but their expectation and their, their wish was Jesus will use that physical power as they saw and they heard so many in the miracles you know, he performed. You know, Jesus will use a power. When he became their king, he will use his power, physical power, amazing power, incredible power to kick out our enemies, these Romans. So we will be liberated from these Romans. Not only there was more, and then he will build a superpower kingdom in the world. But actually, we see what happened. Then, Jesus made the triumphal entries. Jesus' way, God's way was different. These are the things Jesus wanted to prevent. But, in a way, then, so why, why suddenly, after Jesus asked people not to talk about him, who he is, what sort of amazing miracles and healing, all this he performed, why, why he suddenly made this Trample entry to Jerusalem, surrounded by so many people. If you look at it in the John's Gospel, talking same story, you will see the Pharisees said, oh, we'll get no way. Look, you know, whole world has gone after him. Why suddenly make a, this trample entry in public, surrounded by so many people, praise him as a king? 
Well, we can think of the you know, possible reason. You know, well, in a way, yes, that's, that's right. In, the, in order to fulfill the, in the, in the prophecy of Zechariah, you know, actually, you know, I share with you, I read you know, from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. Righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. It's amazing, isn't it? Then a few hundred years later, this is what exactly happened. That was what exactly Jesus was doing. As the Bible clearly tells us, God claimed himself you know, you know, that you know, you know, the heaven and the earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. Amen? My word will never pass away. This is what is exactly happening. And also, God's time came to reveal who really Jesus is so visibly. Through the Jesus proclamation, Jesus was proclaiming in a way with all, doing all this, making triumph entry. He was proclaiming, look, this is who I am, truly. But along with this, I'd like to turn your attention on the, the possible and more or less likely Jesus was uh, doing that actually to show the, his disciples not only 2,000 years ago, but in the future, including now and until he comes to his people his believer to show how we also can make a, such a wonderful triumphal entry into eternity. When we finish our earthly life and earthly ministry, how we can make a, such an amazing triumphal entry into eternity. Amen? Amen. Have you ever thought what it would be? It, it, it would be like, you know, either, you know, we take our last breath in this world and we believe that that is not the end. You know, when film finished, the end. Leave cinema, the end. But because of uh, what Jesus has done for us, we all Christians believe that when we take our last breath, in this world, that's not the end. That will be another beginning of our amazing eternal life in heaven. Amen? Amen. Have you ever thought what it would be like <laughs> after we take our last breath? Our sister, our church secretary, Marge, in the, this morning mentioned in the name of our sister, Ruina. I dearly miss her. I dearly, I dearly miss all our brothers and sisters who have gone to Jesus in glory. I really miss her prayer too in our prayer meeting. You know, whenever she prayed, really, she, you know, I could feel she was speaking to God like a face to face. And I'll never forget, at the very last chapter of her life, she prayed how many times we heard who were there, isn't it? In the prayer meeting. Oh, Father, I can't wait. And I can't imagine what it would be like when I see my Lord Jesus face to face. I can't wait too. Really? Probably people in the world, when they hear that, is he crazy? He want to die now? Or something like that. But everything is in God's hand, isn't it? God wants us to make a, such an amazing triumphal entry into eternity. Amen? And there is a lesson our Lord is speaking to us through the story of his triumphal entry to Jerusalem, how we all believers of Jesus can make a, such an amazing triumphal entry into eternity in heaven. The first things I want to share with you is, I really felt our Lord speaking to us through this story, acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our life. 
acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus in your life. When Jesus and his disciples, as you know, approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage. Out of blue, he sent the 12 his disciples, isn't it? Go to the village, and you will find that this in a donkey, a next donkey, you know, her in a, you know, in a baby colt, will tie there. Just when you find them, just untie them, bring them to me. If anyone, well, we see the same story in other gospel books. You know, we see it in the way the owner came and said, what, what, what are you doing? The answer was just simple. The Lord needs them. Amen? When Jesus said this, he actually proclaimed that, look, I'm the Lord of all. Amen? And the amazing thing is, probably some of you think probably Jesus went ahead of this village and then met this, you know, the owner of the donkey in you know, a cult and made the pre-arrangement. It's not. It's not. He proclaims his lordship over everything in this world. And then this owner, the donkey cult, gave what Jesus needed because he acknowledged the lordship over Jesus, over everything he had. Amen? Amen. Also, the amazing thing is, these two disciples actually did, exactly did, as Jesus said. May I ask you, if you were the, one of the disciples, and the Jesus said, in other words, you go in there, and then you will see, you know, let me, let me like, uh, change a little bit into our modern version, okay? So Jesus asked you and then another brother, sister in Christ, you go and then, you know, open the, this car, there is a car, you open that and they drive it to me. And if it is, the owner said, what are you doing? I'll call police and the Lord will lead them and then it will happen. But amazingly, probably I may get my head, Lord, I may be arrested. <laughs> yeah? But this disciple, two disciples of Jesus, though probably they struggle a little bit understand what Jesus is talking about. But when they went, that's what exactly happened. They obeyed to acknowledge the lordship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how it is important that we acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ in our life and in our ministry. You know, what, whenever in our church we need to make a decision, you know, as a pastor in the church, my prayers always say, Lord, this is your church, this is your ministry, it's in your hand. We are not going for how I like, how I don't like, how I'm feeling. We will pray together, we will make a decision together according to your will. Help us to do so. Amen. You know, this story, in this story, this story is a, like a unique story in the Bible. Jesus claimed himself as the Lord with the Greek word curious. And in a way through that, he really proclaimed, I'm the Lord of all. Shall we all say amen? amen? Jesus is the Lord of all. You know why? I will prepare all these biblical prefer in a reference. What Bible tells us about the lordship over Jesus. We know, in this, you know, when we open the John's Gospel, John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 3, it clearly tells us through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. Amen? He's not only creator, but you know, when we open it, it's another, it's surprising, it's the same number, help me, who are useless for all the numbers and figures. When we open the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, it clearly tells us that Jesus is the sustainer of all things with his powerful word. But when we open the all the Testament, surprisingly, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 14, 
it clearly said, Behold, to Lord your God belong heaven and the highest heaven, the earth, and all that is in it. Amen? And also, well, in a way, Apostle Paul clearly spoke to Christians in Corinth in his first letter in the Bible. You know, everything we have is from the Lord, even our body. Mm? When we look at in the first Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, what do you have that you did not receive? It means you did not receive from the Lord. And in, in chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, 1 Corinthians, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. What was the price? How it was paid? Through the suffering and shedding blood and death of the Lamb of God, Jesus, and the cross of Calvary. Jesus paid it all. Amen? Then he said, Therefore honor God with your bodies. And the Bible clearly tells us even our life is from and in the hand of the Lord. When we look at this you know, parable of this rich fool in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 16, 21, the rich fool actually was so blessed. He had an amazing innocent harvest and he made an innocent plan. You know, he was thinking, oh, so I should you know, take you know, all these small barns you know, down and I will build a larger barns. All this, and with his pride, with his arrogance, he just you know, you know, thought himself, you know, as he had so many in plenty, actually it was from the Lord. He said, take a life easy, eat, Drink and be married. That's what Satan whisper to the people in the world, isn't it? Take a life easy, eat, drink, and be married. But Jesus, this is what our Lord Jesus said about him. But God said, you fool! This very night, your life will be demanded from you. It's a serious, isn't it? Serious statement. What he's saying is, no matter what sort of a plan you make, even your life, if our God decides to take my life tonight, it'll be sad, say bye-bye to you all and to my children, my wife. But that's it. If that's God's will, it will happen. No matter what sort of, you know, all the plan or whatsoever, no matter how we think about ourselves, if God decides to take our life tonight, or even 10 minutes or after we finish in this service, that's it, it will happen. This is what Bible God is speaking to us. Acknowledge my lordship over your life and whatever you do in this world. Are we doing that? Are we truly in acknowledging the lordship of Jesus in our life and in our ministry? Oh, Pastor Peter, today's Palm Sunday. Can you bring something more encouraging and joyful and cheerful? Not like a, make me, me squeezed by the you know, hand of God, strangling me. No, it's not. You know what? If you truly acknowledge the lordship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our life, no, Lord, no matter what, what, whatever I have, and then in my life, my bodies are yours, you know what? How powerful Christian life it will be. You know, I know one very rich Christian. This person suffered in the poverty when she was young. So when she became adult, her purpose, her only purpose in her life is to be rich. And in a way, 
she became rich. But she felt so empty. She thought when she became rich, she would be like the happiest person in the world. But she really, really struggled with the emptiness. But since Jesus came into her life, and through all that in this up and down of roller coaster like in this her life, and when she really heard the voice of the Lord, acknowledge my lordship over everything you have. And you know what? She said, all her life, she lived in tense, tension. Oh, I need more, I need more, I need to earn more, I need to earn more, I need to do more, I need to do more, I need more people to make more money. Her life was actually being dragged by all this. And she certainly felt freedom from all that. You know what? She actually admit in, in her testimony, she was slave of the money and wealth in this world. But you know what? When she truly handed everything over in the, into the hand of Jesus, she not only felt you know, had a blessing of a complete freedom in the Lord, number two, she really felt from that time through Jesus and his word, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, she really felt from that time she began to reign over all the wealth and positions and money in this world. So she just felt free. Whenever she spent some money for the Lord, she had a joy. Before, she had like, oh, am I spending right, you know, my money in the right way? Something like that. Joyful. Freedoms. That's the reason why our Lord Jesus is asking us to acknowledge His Lordship over us. Amen? Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, is there anything make you feel you are being dragged by something in this world? Rather than Jesus, today, this morning, through the, that tribal entry Jesus was making, our Lord is asking us to acknowledge his lordship over you because Jesus wants to set you free from all the shackles of this world. Amen? Amen. Not only that, Jesus wants you to work with him and reign all the things in this world for his kingdom. Amen? Amen. What a blessing that is. So I, I, I don't worry about it. Yeah, I, I do my best with the things I have with my wife, what do you expect? I'm a minister in the church, what do you expect? I don't have much money. <laughs> You'll be surprised if you see my bank detail. Is, it, is that all? And someone asked, someone talked to me, yes, yeah, seriously, a Christian in, in America. Pastor, I'm, do you mind if I ask you, because I'm asking you not try to be nosy, but because I really love you. Do you have a, your own house? <laughs> no. <laughs> Think about your age. <laughs> what are you going to do you know, if anything goes wrong in your ministry? You can't continue ministry. You have to come out from your mom. So I said, don't worry. Thank you for your worry and concern about me. I don't worry. What did Jesus said? Do not worry what to eat, what to drink, or what to wear. All these worries are what the pagans, unbelievers are doing that. But first seek, his fun, he, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Amen? Amen. How powerful it is. Probably with the lack of faith, we feel like when we give a little. I'm not just talking about the money. It's about our times and our lives, whatever we have in our lives. How powerful that faith is, make us uh, feel free, completely free from all the worries whatsoever. And then even make us so powerful Christians to be in this world. As uh, Abraham, he obeyed God's command to sacrifice his son, one and only son. He could complain, Lord, are you joking? This is ridiculous. 
You gave me, you know, this son, you know, at the age of 100, I was, and then now you're asking me to sacrifice him? He didn't do that, is it? Why? He acknowledged the lordship of God over him, no matter how important precious that is. When the Lord said, the Lord needs it, the Lord needs them, we should be willing to give to them, and then let's see how our Lord bless us abundantly, much more than what we have given to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Another message we should hear from the Lord is, be a humble servant, as our Lord Jesus was a humble servant king. With his tribal entry, as Jesus was a fulfilling prophecy of Zechariah about the coming king, then the Messiah, the crowd praise him and worship him with shouting, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. But in here, what we must not miss is, what we must not miss is, you know, we see that the people spread the clocks, their clocks on the road for Jesus. That is true signs of a day were welcoming as their king. If you look at the I think, Second Kings chapter, I think chapter nine, if I'm wrong, please forgive my hopelessness with all the numbers was uh, my wife, Helen, she's amazing. That's why I believe in she and me, we become one body <laughs> to support my weakness. I, if I re remember, cause it's the second in the you know, Kings chapter nine, I can see someone is checking whether the pastor is doing right or not. <laughs> And um, when you look at the jail story, after Jehu was anointed as a king over Israel, and then he shared with his you know, fellow officials, and, and, as soon as they heard he was uh, anointed over Israel as a king, what they did? They all took off their cloaks and spread on him. Am I correct, sister? Yes. Second King chapter 9. <laughs> Pray the Lord. <laughs> they will welcome him as a, their king. And also we see it in the people spreading this, you know, palm branches. That's why Palm Sunday. If you look at the, you know, that ancient in the Middle East in this, you know, uh, record in the history, there are there is sort of like ceremony in that area when their king returns to their country with a victory from the war and the battle. That's why they spread their in the palm branches and that they waved, welcome their king. Hosanna! Hosanna! Bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. But in here, we must not miss one more important thing. Jesus was uh, riding on a colt beside the donkey. That is a symbol of uh, peace and humility. Though people in the crowd joyfully welcome him as their king because they strongly believe Jesus will use this Peace, wonderful, you know, powerful, you know, miraculous power, and they kick out all the this in you know, Romans, and they will be not only free, and they will be superpower nation, the unbeatable kingdom in this world. Actually, this is what Jesus said to his disciples. If we look at one chapter before today's story in the Bible, Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of a Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life and as a ransom for many. Amen? Indeed, 
as he said to his disciples, Jesus came to this world as a servant king when people expect him to use that incredible power, physical power. Actually, Jesus took the sin of the world and the cross and took the, all the shames, sufferings, shedding blood and death on the cross. But, as we can see from Colossians, Paul's letters to Christians in Colossae, you know, God and Jesus triumph over all the power and authority in this world. Amen? Amen. Through the cross. And even Jesus triumph over all the power of sin and death through his powerful resurrection. Praise the Lord. I hope you don't mind if I take off my jacket. I, I feel so hot. <laughs> I'm not sure because of heating or this uh, you know, fire of the Holy Spirit. Or somebody is praying that oh, I don't like that suit you know, Peter is wearing. <laughs> so Lord, you know, make him take it off. Somebody made a comment on my suit today. I know it's a very, little bit unusual. But I feel very comfortable with this because it's a, what, what does that say? It's some flax and it's very stretchable. and. <laughs> If you have prayed for me to take off jacket, please come and tell me. <laughs> I won't blame you. Jesus <coughs> came to this world not to be served, but to serve. And he's asking us to be servant of the Lord, servant of the church, servant for people in the church and then people in the world. That is one of the way we become true disciples of Jesus. You know what? I still remember, you know, when I sat down with the leadership of uh, this church in the Biola, and as a first interview, one of the deacons asked me, what do you think about the elders in the church? It was not an easy question. But only I, what I could was, I, I, I quoted what Jesus said, as our Lord Jesus you know, said, he came to this world not to be served, but to serve. The elders of the church should be true, humble servant in the church. Not like I'm the leader of a church, so you listen to me. This is what I want and you should do. Wrong. Wrong. That is a complete opposite way Jesus asked us to serve. He wants us to be true servant of the Lord, true servant of his church, true servant of the people in the church and the people in the world. Amen? Amen. This is our God, the servant kings. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering. Of worship to the servant king. Amen. Amen. Do you remember what Lord Jesus said in the Matthew chapter 23? In this, you know, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is what exactly Apostle Paul says to the church in Philippi about the Jesus in his letter. If we look at in the Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, your attitude should be the same of that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature of God, did not consider quality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, as Jesus humbled himself and made himself nothing, obedient to God to death, therefore, God exalted him to be highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Shall we all say amen? amen? But you know what? You know what? In the Bible we see how God distinguishes his true servant and who are like a servant but actually not. That can be distinguished by the moment when things go or not go along with their wish or expectation. When everything goes well, everybody can claim as a servant of God. But when the difficulties and the, even some of the horrible, terrible things happen in their life, which they do not wish, which was completely opposite their expectation, that moment, God will see who is a true servant, who are not. You know, people who praise and you know, accepted Jesus in the sin as their king, what happened a few days later? Hmm? We, we watched the film of the, the Passion of the Christ. I mean, Pontius Pilate, <laughs> they mocked these you know, you know, Jewish leaders and then the people in the crowd. This is mad. You, you, you praise him as a, your king a few days ago. Now you are shouting, crucify him, crucify him. What did happen? Why did it happen? Because their expectation was, okay, we accept you as our king if you meet our expectation. If we truly use the powerful you know, the power to get kicked out all the Romans and then make a, our, our you know, you know, kingdom of Israel to superpower nation, then I will serve you. But if you don't, actually that's what happened, isn't it? In the trial of Pontius Pilate, they saw how after Jesus was flogged and beaten and then mocked in the you know, we see in this passion of Christ how he was, he was suffering with shedding the blood and so powerlessly standing there, then they change their mind. They change their mind. From the praising him as their king to shout, crucify him, crucify him. We can be like that, isn't it? Lord Jesus, if you don't do something what I want, you will be my Lord. But if you give me something I don't want, or you bring me the situation which I didn't expect it, or I didn't wish, no way. But you know what? After bearing in mind how this crowd in Jerusalem was turned from shout, you know, praising Jesus as their king, accept him as their king, to shout, crucify him, crucify him. We see complete opposite story in the Bible, isn't it? Two or three weeks ago in our, you know, prayer meeting, I shared Job's story. Job, he lost everything. One day, including his children. But he still praised God. Worship him. Bible clearly tells us through that he didn't do anything wrong. And in the Bible, before that story happened, you see that's the reason why God called Job as a my servant. Amen? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if we become truly servant of God, faithful servant of God, as Jesus has been faithful servant to us, no matter what happened, we should continuously follow him, praise him and worship him as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. Amen? Amen. In our Christian relationship as well. Sometimes, you know, in, in, in the church, people say, oh, I love you. Could mean as long as you do what I want. As long as you meet my expectation. As long as, but one day, if you don't 
meet my expectation. Or if you even upset me, you will see my different face. That is not faithful servant. Our Lord Jesus didn't love us in that way. Jesus' love is unchanging, unconditional, unfailing love. Amen? Amen. That is the love we have received. So as Jesus said, gave his new commandment to his disciples, on the night he was arrested, love one another as I have loved you. By this, all men will know that you are my true disciples. Amen. At last, we should keep you know, proclaiming and praising the name of Jesus in this world as our King, as our Lord, and as our Savior. Proclaiming and sharing the name of Jesus is so, so important. Is God Jesus calling for all Christians? Please, please don't think that's for pastors or evangelists only. It's for all Christians. You know, in Luke's gospel, talking same story, trample and of Jesus, we, we, we see that, you know, these Pharisees hated to see, in this, you, know, you know, everyone followed Jesus. So they said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And what did Jesus say? I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stone will cry out. Amen? Amen. What does the, the last verse of the whole book of Psalm says? When we open the Psalm 150, let everything that has breath pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Amen? Amen. And what was the last in the you know, command of Jesus, you know, to his disciples? When we look at the Mark chapter 6, verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, not only man. All creation. That's why I believe we, we Christians should be standing at the front line of a climate change. That is a, because that's the call of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Preach the good news to all creation. That's why we should love all these animals and looking at the animals and the plant. There are so many wicked people, you know, to just secretly you know, let all these pollutions you know, go out, no matter what. What was the last word of Jesus to his disciples just before his glorious ascension? When we look at the Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus clearly says to his disciples before he was ascended in heaven, you will receive a power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen? Amen. Let's bear in all this our heart. My suggestion to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, is during this Easter, shall we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you at least one person who don't believe in Jesus and share them? Look, this is amazing. Savior, King, and the Lord I have. Amen? That will be really amazing our response to true meaning of Easter. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Please bear in mind this. You know, before I share it with you, I, whenever I, I have this in my sermon, I always take this to myself first. I'm a pastor in the church. It doesn't mean that I'm in the safe ground for my salvation. But as Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Amen? Amen. You know, my prayers are always, Lord, I hope and pray that no one I have ever served in the church you call me to serve will face the rest of the story from this Matthew chapter 7 
when Jesus returns this world in power and glory, there will be people say, Lord, Lord, did I, proph- did I prophesy in your name? Did I drive out the demon in your name? Did I perform all this in a you know, miracle in your name? But Jesus said, I never knew you. Why? What happened to them? What went wrong to them? Because they didn't do it according to the will of a Father in heaven. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, this morning, when we all joyfully celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus on this Palm Sunday, through his word of truth and the life in the Bible, our Lord is speaking to us how we can make the triumphal entry into eternity when we finish the journey of our life in this world. Let's bear This message, I believe, I've shared with you because I believe it's from the Lord. To me first and to us all, acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus in our life and be ready to give whatever we hear from the Lord. The Lord needs it. The Lord needs them. And let's be humble servant of the Lord as uh, he was a symbol humble servant king who gave his life for the salvation of mine and the world. Let's keep praising and proclaiming and sharing the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this world. Then when we finish our journey of life in this world and when we joyfully make our triumphal entry to eternity in the heaven, Before our Lord in glory, we can joyfully proclaim Hosanna in the highest heaven. Shall we all shout joyfully, Hosanna! Hosanna! As time has gone on, we will just skip the the, the hymn that we prepared, but we will do communion together to remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here is the table of the Lord. We are gathered to his supper, a foretaste of things eternal. Come when you are fearful to be made new in love. Come when you are doubtful to be made strong in faith. Come when you were regretful and be made whole. Come, old and young, there is room for all. I'd like to invite you all, brothers and sisters in Christ, to come to the table of the Lord together. But may I share with you, this, is, this communion is for all those who truly believe in the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. If you don't know, I'm not sure where I'm standing, in the, in the Lord, you know, you know, please, but still uh, stay with us. I'm sure our Lord will bless you. In this time, we remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This time, we are reminded that we, each individual Christian, is not alone because Jesus is with us. Also, because we are part of this body of Jesus Christ with my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit and the power of your word of truth and life that may make us to be perfect to love you, and then worthily magnify your holy name and proclaim your name to people in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.